Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Health Tech Podcast. Today we are throwing back yet again and we're throwing back to episode number 287. And what we're talking about is accelerating women's innovation. My guest is Dr. Michelle Griffin and well, Michelle is an expert in women's health to say the least uh, and she advises loads of different health tech startups on their strategy in the women's health sphere. So, um, Today, in this clip, we're talking about the need for tangible outcomes and the intention behind health tech startups. I think women's health is far more on the radar now of people than it used to be, which is great. But what Michelle talks about is this need to convert that energy into some tangible outcomes and how we practically go about doing that and how these startups and these technology companies practically go about doing that. Um our last Google event actually was on uh, women's health and we had a few different people um, on stage talking about women's health from slightly different vantage points, really trying to push this conversation forwards on women's health. So it's not just hype, it's not just people talking, but people actually taking action, startups actually developing decent technology products and crucially having a genuinely positive effect on women around the world. Incredibly important topic. Uh, this conversation also goes a long way to advancing that conversation. So uh Hope you enjoy it. I'd like to know what you perceive is happening in women's health right now. That even that introduction that I gave about it feeling more on the radar now is that topical? Is is that relevant? Sorry, uh, is that real? Is that real from your perspective? Is that leading to anything actually useful going on? It's all well and good talking, but is there any action? Um, you tell me what's what's going on in women's health. What's your perception of of the world of women's health right now? Mm, I think it's a really good point. I think it is what's real and relevant is the intention. The intention is there, like I haven't seen before over Great. the last few years. That intention's there, and it's building. You know, when we look at the kind of VC angel investment landscape they're all shouting and saying, look, this is a growth area. Um, And what follows through with that is an intention which should by and large lead to more funding. We are starting to see more funding in this space. And so from a women's health tech startup, investment, innovation point of view, yes, there is definitely a growth area. And the intention is there. Um, Is that having an impact? No, I don't think so. And I don't think I'm alone in seeing that. Um, But, and we've talked a lot about this, you know, there are time lags. And, you know, I recognise that not everything's going to shift overnight. My concern comes, though, is twofold. One, if we don't get, if we don't see a significant change in some part of what can be deemed as the women's healthcare space. And I mean a positive change, a positive impact. Soon, I worry that this intention starts to lose its foundation. It loses its weightiness and it becomes like, does this now mean that it's a trend and it's not gonna come to anything and everyone just moves on their intentions onto the next big thing. So I am desperate for anyone to succeed to any extent in this space, but a t- tangible success that people, other people can hold up and say, when X, Y, Z did this, this is what happened. Um, and then the second thing which relates to that is my concern over the current space is that good intentions are there, but this push and drive and need to see and measure outcomes is not following through. So it's all on the ideas end of it. And it's not saying, but this is the effect I want to see. So I speak to lots of companies, like I'm talking many every single day, day in, day out, weeks, you know, going, having phone calls with people, advising actual clients, speaking to people on LinkedIn. I'm in many, many women's health tech groups and we're getting chat all the time and the ideas are not you know there's no lack of ideas but what I say is what's this going to do what 
is a woman going to see? What's the difference going to be? Well, and that's a little bit more sketchy. And I'm not saying you need to have everything worked out. But, you know, if I come at this, and as I say to my clients, you need to start with that. Don't start with the pain point or your own personal journey of what happened to you when you had to face this what or, you know, manage this condition or whatever. Start with what that woman who you don't know in the street or that gynecologist or that A&E doctor or whoever it be in the healthcare system needs. And what it's not the pain points, but it's the outcome. Everyone's saying, these are the pain points and this is how we're addressing it. But I'm like, do I build a product for the pain points? I don't know. Yeah, you need to be conscious of them, but I would build a product for an outcome I want to see, not for the pain points. It just seems the wrong way around to me. And I think if you start with the outcome you want to see and the outcome you're going to measure and you look at it like a clinical trial, you say, look, this is what my hypothesis is. And I suspect that this will happen and I want to see this happen. And then I will build backwards and I will build whatever product I need to build because my business is focusing on getting that outcome. My business is not focused on building this product. And people are too wedded to their, especially in women's health, their personal journey, which I completely understand is a massive motivator. And it's pushed people into this space for, you know, for good. And I'm really pleased about it. But one of the biggest things I say is like, stop thinking about this for you and start thinking about your business. What's your business going to do? That's not what you're going to do. What's your business going to do? And what outcome is your business going to achieve? for women ultimately and how are you going to measure that that's very aligned to purpose isn't it then and as you say you, there's less of uh, less of a wedding to any given product or approach or way of doing things you're you're building the whole company around a certain purpose and vision which is really interesting when you talk about outcomes there what out give me some outcome what outcomes would you like to see what do you what com, what outcomes do you want companies built around what are some examples there that's a good question i mean i think like i'm a big picture kind of person and so i'd love to say look these massive outcomes but in reality i think when it comes down to a business what you need to do is is, you know, like we say, and we hear a lot, and I think it's it's right to say, look, you need to niche and then grow. So the kind of outcomes that I would be saying is not to say that, you know, you're going to knock out the diagnostic journey for this, or you're going to be able to continually screen for something that we don't even look for at the moment. <laughs> I would just be like, you know, I'd say the outcome, and I wouldn't necessarily say this is the vision for your your company mm. but this kind of what are you doing you're what you're doing is you're going to say let's just say i'm going to take cervical screening which is a well-established screening pathway accepted in the uk and many other countries accepted by and large by women they may not choose to do it but they recognize it's there and they go and they have a smear done and typically that's done at a gp setting and i'm going to take that and I'm going to say, look, I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm going to do it at home in a way that gets hold of these cells so they can still be analysed in exactly the same downward pathway. But I'm going to get hold of them in an easier way, let's just say. Um, and so I need to do it to like increase the uptake of screening for cervical screening, let's just say. And And I'm like, OK, that's fine, because what we know is that the uptake of cervical screening is really poor and is on the decline again. And a lot of it is because people are scared, fearful, don't want to go to the GP, don't have time to go to the GP to get their smear. And that's like a whole nother area to unpack what's going on there. But you say, look, I'm going to move that and I'm going to take that. And the outcome will be is that more people get their um, smear taken or they get their screening done, however you're going to go about it. And so then you say, look, why aren't people not getting their smear done? And where have people happily done things? Where have things worked really well? So I need to take that people don't want to do this for this reason, but people have overcome similar reasons by doing it like this. 
right, now I need to buy, build a product or a service that brings those two bits together and really put those two pieces together. Did I start by saying, look, I've got this amazing new kit that you can, you know, we on a stick and collect cervical cells and we can screen on that. And that's my technology. And da, 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 da. I'm not saying it's not possible. But what I'm saying is, is that people focus too much on the product and not the outcome. And it's the outcome that's going to be effective and make you successful. Mm. So you need to, the product you can change. You can change and you can do whatever you need to do. That's product development. But people are so wedded to the start of the process rather than what you're trying to achieve. And I just think, you know, that's what you want to shift your mindset to. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that clip. If you want to listen to the full episode, you can go back to episode number 287. Uh, that's with Dr. Michelle Griffin, Accelerating Women's Health Innovation. Um, it's not on YouTube yet. Sorry about that. It will be, I'm sure, at some point. But uh, you can get that wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, there is a huge need to focus on creating these positive, measurable outcomes and for businesses to evolve in this space to deliver genuine impact. And so um, you can listen to Michelle talk about all of that stuff in far more detail in that full episode. So hope you go back and enjoy that one. <laughs>